Hi everyone, it's Rob from Active Health Clinic here. And in this video, I wanted to go through what the biopsychosocial model is and how that relates to pain, different types of pain as well, and just health more broadly. So the biopsychosocial model is what I've got on the, the screen right here. And uh, what it describes is three domains that all and inform and inter interact with one another to inform uh, our, the status of our health and pain. So I'll go through each domain and just explain a bit in, in a bit of detail what each one means. So I'll start with bio, so biologically what is going on with our body. What this is really all about is our, our physical uh, the physical form and the condition of our body. So this has to do with things like uh, genetics, levels of information, inflammation, uh, nociception, which is uh, the scientific word for um, danger or threat signals that are coming through our nervous system. The overall state of, our, of each system in our body, whether there's any dysfunction or pathology there. Uh, tissue pathology, so this is to do with our skin, our bones, our muscles, our joints, our ligaments, um, our organs, uh, whether there's any anything wrong with them, any damage. And then also the way that we move, so whether how we load our body, um, how we move, the postures that we find each other, ourselves in, things like that. So that's the bio, and it's really anything to do with our physical body. The next domain is psycho, so our psychology. Um, really anything to do with our brain and our, or our mind, really. So this covers um, things like our beliefs and our thoughts and our knowledge. So all these things, how we think about our bodies, how we think about our health, um, what others have taught us or told us or led us to believe about the state of our health or how we should behave, what's healthy, what's not, um, our habits and things like that, and as well as our feelings and actions that we take around our health. So that's the psycho or the mind. And then there's the social element. So that one is really about our environment, our, the world around us, and the people in it as well. So. This is heavily influenced by, our, of course, our family and our friends um, and the expectations or the support or lack of support potentially from those areas, our colleagues as well, um, that we might work with or interact with in our community. Um, the, our community's culture, our family's culture, our workplace culture society, all of these sorts of things. So it's really sort of those, those high level sort of things just are, that are ever present in our, in our world, uh, as well as access to care um, that we might have or, or lack of access to care. So all of these things, all of these areas interrelate to create an experience of health or pain or lack of pain as well. So it's not, I suppose the biggest takeaway from this slide is that it's not just about the, um, the state of our body. It's not just about, any, you know, whether we've got injury or whether we've got disease or pathology that will dictate our health. It's the interaction of all of these three areas. And um, there's, a, there's a terrific book, as you can see in the reference down the bottom, the Explain Pain Handbook and the Protector Meter by the Noi Group. They're fantastic resources. So from here, what I'll do is go through a couple of different examples of pain scenarios and how each one of each one of these domains actually relate, um, creates an experience of pain. Okay, so there's the biopsychosocial model again, just in pie chart format. Okay, so with this uh, scenario, we've got acute pain. So it's when someone, so acute pain is uh, when pain is very short lived. It's very quick onset, quick offset, that sort of thing. That's usually in relation to a physical injury. And in this case, stepping on a piece of Lego is that physical injury. So some of us might have experienced stepping on a piece of Lego or something that's just really sharp and when we're in bare feet. 
Um, when we step on that piece of Lego, the main uh, domain that is creating the pain experience is really just from our body. So there's a, a nervous signal, sorry, nervous system signal that is sent from our foot up through the nerves, into our spine, into our brain. Uh, our brain receives that information and then goes, you just stepped on something sharp, I'm going to make that hurt. So you don't do it again. And of course, in every scenario with pain, there is this interaction, this, there is this biopsychosocial, this body, mind, world interaction going on. But this is just to demonstrate the sort of, I suppose, the uh, proportions. So in this case, there's a strong signal coming up from the foot. That's the body domain. Um, it doesn't, the, the context and our thoughts and our beliefs uh, and the people around us, they're going to, they don't really play a huge role in the pain experience because it's quite simple and clear cut. Now, if we change the context, now the context is really, really important here when, when we're talking about pain. If we change the context here, and we're still stepping on a piece of Lego, but the context is now we're actually trying to escape a house fire. So if we sort of think about this on a, a logical level, if you are trying to escape a house fire, you know, it's, it's very urgent, you're probably quite uh, full of adrenaline and, and charged up and you're, you're very you're highly motivated to get out of that house to save your life. If you step on a piece of Lego, while it may still hurt, you're not going to be, you're probably not going to be in screaming agony as much as just if you were wandering around your house at, you know, in the middle of the night and it's dark and you just step on a piece of Lego when there's no urgency. If you're trying to escape a house fight, that is the priority. And our bodies are always geared to protect us. Whatever the highest, whatever serves us in the, in, in the, the highest way to protect us, if that made sense. Not sure if I made complete sentences there. Um, so in this example, you can see that the the portion of the biopsychosocial model relating to the body is quite small relative to the context, though. So what the mind might be going through, what the world around us is doing. So if that that same signal will come up through our nerves into our brain, but our brain will go, well, I've got much higher priorities here, so I'm going to suppress that pain signal uh, or that nociception signal, so pain is not as significant. So the in this example, the mind, you know, the, the thoughts and, and, and those processes, as well as the world around us, are really going to dictate how much pain we're in. We might feel pain later on when we're out of danger though. Okay, so different scenario, different type of pain here. Chronic localized pain. So chronic meaning much more long term, so it's, it's, it's a long term um, pain condition, and localized meaning that it's just relating to one part of the body. So in this example, we're dealing with a past workplace injury. Let's just say uh, a back, yeah, back pain relating to the back. Sorry, pain relating to your back. Um, that was caused by an injury uh, around lifting or carrying something. So whenever we get a uh, get an injury that is of this sort of nature, what our body does is wants to protect it pretty immediately. So over the next coming days or weeks, your body will start to lay down or, or create new, it'll multiply the nerve endings in that area where that injury was. And that's all in the name of trying to protect it. Let's try to make that part of the body really sensitive. So you, know, you can't move it without know, knowing that you're moving it or, or feeling any sort of pain. So that's what the body does. It also makes those nerves a lot faster and it also changes, actually creates change in the brain to that take care of that part of the body, the back in this case, um, much more dense with nerves, bigger, more sensitive, that sort of thing. So we've got a few areas uh, there to protect us. Now what can happen is after an injury has healed, so let's just say this back injury is healed, 
the body can actually leave behind the the nervous system structure that can that is highly sensitive and that's where often people can say oh i keep injuring my back again uh, i keep doing something to my to my back it's that same spot i keep re-injuring myself well maybe perhaps not perhaps that part of your body is still just really really sensitive because of the nervous system changes hopefully that makes sense so um a past workplace injury is going to be heavily it's going to be it is going to be influenced by changes in the body you know there there are going to be nervous system changes but also there's going to be uh changes in the mind and that is also and in, in the world around us as well so i'll try and run through some examples where the mind is concerned this is going to depend on your thoughts, your beliefs, and your understanding and your knowledge around that injury. Uh, how was that handled initially? Um, was it were you supported at the time of that injury, uh, or is there a bit of um, if relationship stress going on at that workplace? You know, is there a bit of blame or um, tension going on there? Uh, that might be influencing making it a little bit more a little bit worse a little bit scary a little bit more of a threat going on um, also the world around us um, are, are there insurance disputes going on are there sort of return to workplace disputes going on things like that is there an adequate support or is it is the environment and culture a bit dismissive of what's going on you know this can influence pain, this can turn pain up or it can turn pain down. And I've seen both in the clinic as well, different scenarios. So hopefully that makes a bit of sense and, and we're starting to understand that it's not just the state of the body that it dictates how much pain we're in. So now we'll talk about um, a completely different scenario. So again, chronic pain, so long-term pain, but it's more widespread. And often the name that's given to this is fibromyalgia. So people with fibromyalgia will often feel pain that is not specific to one part of the body. And every person with fibromyalgia, their experience is very different. Um, sometimes it can be regional. Sometimes it can be it can be sort of hot spots around the body to do with, and that may be related to past injuries. So there might be fibromyalgia on top of past injuries. Uh, but maybe not. Maybe it's just very general, very broad, and this person is not particularly sensitive to any particular movements or has not had any particular injuries in the past. And in this circumstance, it's far less about the state or the condition of the physical body. So there may be absolutely nothing wrong with any particular joint, muscle, bone, um, skin around that area, organs, could be absolutely nothing wrong and it's more related to the state of the mind and the state of the world around them. So it's really just about where is the danger, where is the, the threat coming from that's driving this, this, this condition. In this case fibromyalgia is seen as a, uh, an extressive, sorry, an extressive, an excessive stress um, reaction basically so there is uh, and I use the word stress very very broadly not just lots of emails that sort of thing it's kind of more of the nature of unrelenting stress something that's out of out of the person's control or something they didn't recover from this could be physically cognitively emotionally environmentally probably all of those things in you know to some degree but this affects how our how our mind functions, um, our, our thoughts, feelings, behaviours, beliefs, our mental health. And it's also going to be driven by the world around us again. How much support do we have? Um, what is life like at the moment? What sort of people or um, places are we dealing with that could be causing stress or load uh, to our bodies? And this is really how fibromyalgia comes about. So I hope that that has been useful and it's helped you understand the different types of pain and how each of the biopsychosocial segments interrelate and create
create this this uh, experience of pain in different contexts. Um, if you have found this useful, please do share it around. Um, I'd much appreciate that, or we as a team would much appreciate that, uh, because we are all about helping as many people as possible. We have a goal of uh, impacting one million people by 2022, which is now not that far away. So please help us with that mission. All right, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.